brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being with us on tonight, the second night of our revival services last night. We were truly blessed by God and we anticipate a mighty move from God on tonight. So wherever you are, we ask that you pray with us, participate in our worship service on tonight and watch God give you a word from on high that will be a blessing to his people. Uh, for our call to worship on tonight, Pastor the scripture found in the 22nd numbers of Psalm. This is what the psalmist says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from heaven me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not and in the night season and am not silent, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabited the praise of Israel. Consider this your call to worship on tonight. Listen, so much has been going on throughout this city, this country, this nation, and if we need anything, we need a word from God. We're getting ready to pray at this moment. If you would like to give to New Mount Zion, we want to remind our members of the $30 assessment that we have asked of each of you. So please, ma'am, if you would like to give, simply go to Givelify, type in New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. That's 140 West Maple Street here in the city of Jackson. And be a blessing to the body of Christ. Pause where you are as we invite God's presence into this place on tonight. Most gracious God, our Father, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and the Father of Jacob, we come to you on tonight. First of all, to tell you how much we thank you. We come to tell you how grateful we are in spite of all that is going on around us. We are grateful and thankful that things are as well with us as they are. God, we thank you for the visitation of your spirit on last night. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will give us exactly what we need to hear on tonight. We pray for those who are watching, who are in our parking lot. God, I pray a special prayer for those members, those individuals that you will continue to be with them. Those who are out there in social media land, those who are not members of this church, God, all of us need you in our lives. God, we thank you for this period of worship. We don't want our worship to be in vain, God, so we invite your presence into this place. Take control of our minds. Take control of our hearts, our lips, the words that fall from our minds, so that they can be pleasing and a sweet aroma in your presence. God, we pray for the God man who's going to bless us on tonight. We pray, God, that you would give him a new and fresh anointing to preach and teach your holy and divine word. But more importantly, God, we thank you for salvation. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who paid it all for our sins at Calvary's cross. Now, God, as we go further on in this worship, do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, our ensemble is getting ready to give us a selection, and then we will return after that selection.
from Zion. He deserves the praise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not only does he deserve the praise, he desires and he demands our praise. Total praise yeah. belongs to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. You ought to put your hands together wherever you may be and praise the name of the Lord on tonight. Listen, you are getting ready to witness the introduction of our guest preacher, pastor on tonight, Pastor Marcus Cheeks. So th yo, those of you out there in social media land, uh, enjoy the uh, introduction of our great speaker, preacher, pastor on tonight. Those out there in the parking lot, you will experience a one or two minute delay. Uh, but at this time, you're going to hear the introduction of our guest preacher. Then you're going to be blessed with another selection by this ensemble. Then we're going to bring up the man of God on tonight. Pastor Marcus E. Cheeks is the fifth pastor of True Light Missionary Baptist Church. He was born and raised not far from True Light in Jackson, Mississippi. Pastor Cheeks holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Tougaloo College, a Master of Science degree from Jackson State University, and is currently a doctoral candidate at the University of Mississippi. He served as an officer in the Mississippi Army National Guard for 11 years. By trade, Pastor Cheeks is an educator and has an extensive background in working with high-risk, low-income youth and utilizing federal programs to address their academic and social needs. He is the former Executive Director of Federal Programs for the State of Mississippi, where he served 14 years as a State Administrator. In this role, Pastor Cheeks received national recognition by leading the National Title I Association in 2015 and 2016. He was also one of 25 educators selected by the United States Department of Education from across the country chosen to be a member of the Every Student Succeeds Act Negotiated Rulemaking Committee in April 2016. Having received a call to ministry in 2003, God ordered the steps of Pastor Cheeks to lead True Light in 2006. Pastor Cheeks is leading the church into a deeper spiritual walk focused on prayer and fasting. He is a sound preacher and believes in being a living example of the word. Pastor Cheeks is the senior vice president of the Jackson District and Congress of Christian Education of Jackson, Mississippi. He is involved in the State and National Baptist Association. He is a student of the word and loves to preach and teach the gospel. He often serves as a guest columnist with published articles in the religious section of the Mississippi Link newspaper. He currently serves as president of the Mississippi Baptist Seminary and Bible College. Pastor Cheeks is married to his best friend of 24 years, Devonda. They have been blessed with three sons, Jonathan, Miles, and Allen. I present to you Pastor Marcus E. Cheeks.
We want to thank God for those of you that have joined in with us as we have found ourselves in this space and time for, yet again, another night of revival and declaring God's good news. Uh, I want to thank God for uh, this New Mount Zion family uh, inviting us into their space in this uh, unusual uh, and unorthodox way of, of worshiping to us. Uh, even though we've been doing this now for the better part of a year, um, there is still some getting used to um, the adjustments that are necessary for us to be able to do what God has called us to do. I want to thank God for Pastor Tobias. Uh, thinking enough of this poor preacher uh, to invite him in uh, for a night of word here this evening and we again just thank God for this um, ensemble that has sang out of the depth of their heart tonight. Uh, thank God for musicians that are here and carrying this gospel forward and um, just thank God for all that God has done and he continues to do in about all of our blessed lives. I am thankful tonight uh, to um, continue you to remind uh, uh, the members of the light that we are um, away from home this evening. Uh, I am uh, celebrating uh, this month my 15th year of pastoral service there in True Light Baptist Church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, seems like it was just uh, yesterday, Tobias, when we were uh, finding our way into these uh, hallowed grounds of churches that we have found ourselves in. We both are privileged to stand on the shoulders of, of uh, prolific, um, long-tenured pastors um, here at uh, New Mount Zion, Reverend Bell, uh, that Tobias stands on the shoulders of, and uh, me and True Light, uh, Reverend R.H. Walls. Uh, uh, these men set an example for um, standing uh, in the gap, uh, delivering God's word over um, time uh, that uh, is really a premium now, um, really, really uh, a premium now. Uh, many writers will argue that the life expectancy of the average pastor is five to six years. And uh, to, to be able to eclipse the mark of 15, we just thank God and give him all the glory and honor uh, for it. I want to um, thank God tonight for our members, uh, True Light. They uh, may or may not be connecting uh, for some strange reason or another. When I got over here in New Mount Zion, my um, electronic leash uh, decided it didn't want to do all that it's supposed to do. Uh, so uh, we will we'll make sure we get the connections together and uh, get this shared uh, into the appropriate pages and where folks can see it uh, as we go forward beyond this day and time. So uh, again, we just thank God for, for being here with us tonight. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we get started uh, in delivering of God's word? Oh, blessed and eternal Father, God, we have paused here this evening to again acknowledge you as our Lord and our Savior. To thank you, Master, for this blessed day. To give you honor and praise, oh Father, for the privilege being able to share your good news. Lord, we pray tonight for the one that may be hearing your word. We pray, God, for those that may be on the other end of this lens, oh Father, and wondering about the pathway, the direction, may be still uncertain of God, of God about worshiping and praising your name in this unusual way. But Father, we pray now that you would grant them peace. Grant them comfort, O oh Heavenly Father. Let them realize that you are still an able God. That in spite of the ways we have to push through, O oh God, as long as we're lifting up your mighty name, you said if I be lifted up, you would draw all men unto me. So Father, tonight we pray that you would help us lift you up and lift you high, dear Master, so that this sensing world might know that you are still an able God. Father, we thank you here tonight. We bless you, God. We praise your holy and your majestic name. And they all declare together, amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen again. Amen again. I want to take just a few moments here this evening and call your attention to the writing according to Matthew. Uh, here it is in Matthew chapter 4. 
I'll be reading to you from the English Standard Version of the Bible here this evening, Matthew chapter 4, um, Matthew chapter 4, and I want to look at the fourth verse in this text, Matthew chapter 4, verse number 4. And I want to read here to you tonight from the English Standard Version of the Bible. The writer says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I want to talk to you for the time that is I was in the Lord tonight, power over temptations. Power over temptations. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, uh, Paul tells Timothy that it is imperative that he learn the word. Yeah. He said to him that not only is it imperative that he learn the word, but he reminds him that the word of God has been parents. Yeah. He says to him in verse 16, all scripture has been inspired by God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness. He says that for a man to be perfect, he must be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I want to argue this evening here that if we are to overcome the temptations of this world, Tobias, we have to have the word of God. If we are to find the strength, the power, the understanding to get beyond the propensity to sin on this side, it's going to require the word of God. There are many of us that have some unusual and some strange habits. Habits that have been with us for a long time. Habits that we've talked about getting rid of, things that we've stop, talked about stopping doing. The habits that continue to show up in our everyday lives. But in order for us to break that habit, in order for us to stop the temptation at the past, we need the Word of God. Educators will argue that in order for you to really break a bad habit, it takes 30 consecutive days of doing it the right way. In other words, the writer argues that you've got to have constant and continuous repetition in order for that awkward and that unusual position of not doing what you're accustomed to doing to go away. It's not natural for us to to just break habits by chance. It's not easy for us to stop falling into the sinful ways and the bad habits that sometimes have clouded our everyday lives. It is not easy to break something that appears to be coming naturally to us. But I stopped by this evening to remind us that if we are to form good habits, if we are to break those things that are causing us to be at enmity against God, if we are to target something that's greater and something more extensive in God's word, we must have the word of God. Yeah. It's important for every believer to understand that if they're going to hit the target that God has ordained for their individual lives, they must be shooting with the word of God. I remember in my days of being in the military, they would oftentimes argue to us that it's more than just picking up the weapon and loading that weapon that gives you the ability to be able to hit your target. You've got to spend some time, Tobias, making sure that your aim is appropriate. You've got to make sure that you are not only aiming in the right direction, in the right mindset, but you've got to be sure that you are breathing appropriately. You got to make sure that you don't take any shortcuts. You got to make sure that your repetition for squeezing that trigger and allowing the round to fire from that gun, it must take the same process over and over and over again. That's if you're going to hit the target. I'm 
I'm not stop, I hadn't stopped by this afternoon to talk to anybody about shooting anything. I think we've got enough of that going on around us. But what I want you to understand that if we are to do what thus says the Lord, if we are to live by the word of God, we've got to make sure that we send, spend our time targeting doing what thus says the Lord. The only person over here in New Mount Zion this evening that has some bad habits. I, I know, I know that I'm probably the only one that has some vices that show up in their life every day that they have breath. I'm probably positive that I'm the only one that struggles with some little things in life, things that you've been trying to get rid of from year after year, but they keep showing up in your life. If I could testify for just a moment, I thought I'd let somebody know that I have a few vices in my life. Well, one of my vices is Coca-Cola. I, I have an issue with Coca-Cola because it looks like regardless of how much I try to push away that Coke can, how much I try to ignore that red, red beauty that's sitting there with the drips of, of condensation falling from her, regardless of how many times I walk past her, it looks like I can hear her call my name. And, and I know that Coca-Cola is not good for me. I know she's full of sugars and all kinds of carbonated water that keeps me from being able to be as healthy as I might need to be. I understand that, but the temptation alone lures me in. Oh, I stopped by here this evening not to remind just you of your temptation with Coca-Cola, but whatever your vice is, whatever your temptation is, the word of God says that that that, that influence to yield to that temptation is an act of the devil. And, and Jesus says when you're dealing with the devil, you've got to make sure that you've got the right weapon to be able to handle the devil. you got to make sure that you are equipped and you are prepared to deal with the devil on a level that God and God alone can handle his motives. You see, through our temptations, my brothers and sisters, the desire and the interest is to basically separate you from God. Yeah, yeah, the temptation is not about trying to make you lose weight or gain weight. The temptation is not about trying to cause you to be in the midst of some kind of debauchery that keeps you at odds with your brothers or your sisters. The temptation has nothing to do with showing your weaknesses or your strength. The truth of the matter is the temptations that show up in our lives are designed to separate us from God. Yeah. I, I know it doesn't seem like that's the case but if we look at the record for just a few moments here this evening, you will find that, that the adversary showed up at Jesus' doorstep not to do anything other than to separate Jesus from his Father in heaven. Yeah, yeah, it's right there in the book. The Bible says here that Jesus was hungered and, and the tempter came and he said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Yeah, yeah. My, my first argument to you here this evening is that temptations, they are in designed to entice you to do wrong things. So in order for you to get beyond the wrongness, you've got to have power over those temptations. And your power, my brothers and sisters, comes through the word of God. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, the strange thing is that we, we get God's word twisted. Yeah, yes, we do. We get it twisted. We get it mixed up we get it un, 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 unbound we we get God's word messed up and, and, and here I need to stop and remind you here this evening that, that that's not anything unusual yeah yeah I, I was reading the other day and I was over in the book of Genesis and I I found something that just really struck my struck my nerve in, in the in the book of Genesis in Genesis chapter 3 we find where where Adam and Eve and the serpent are in conversation with one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the serpent has shown up at Eve's doorstep and he has said to Eve that, listen, you need to, you, he said to the woman at this point in time, you need to go and eat from that tree that's in the midst of the garden. But, but, but you know what she does? She makes her first mistake by engaging the adversary in conversation. Yeah, yeah. That's our first problem is that many times when we lose the power over our temptations, it's because we're talking to the
the wrong source of power. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was talking to the, the, the adversary. She was talking to the, the devil. She was talking to the serpent. And, and she said to the serpent, listen, God told us not to touch or eat from that tree that's in the midst of the garden. Yeah, yeah. And that was her first problem. Yeah. She, she was quoting God's word, but she had quoted it, my brothers and sisters, partly wrong. Because the truth of the matter is, if you look in those in that second chapter, you'll see where God didn't tell her nothing. He told Adam that you are not to eat of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. And then there it is, she in the midst of this conversation with this adversary, and now she's added a piece to it, saying that she's not to touch and or eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. Yeah, yes. Yeah. One writer argued that what she should have done is paid attention to what God's word said and pulled a fruit from that tree and threw it at that serpent in the midst of the garden. That's probably what she should have done. But the bottom line is that she got confused about the word of God. So as a result, she did not have the power that she needed through God's word. Yeah. Romans 13 and 1 says, let everyone be subject unto a higher power. For there is no power but of God and the powers that are ordained of God. And my brothers and sisters, the power that we have, the power that we that we desire, the power that we need to get over these temptations, it lies in the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Satan has it here this evening that he uses just limited words with Jesus, but he uses enough words with Jesus to tempt him beyond his his temptation. He, he says to he says to Jesus after he comes out of this wilderness, he says, "Listen, I want you to make these stones living bread." Yeah, yeah. Think about someone being hungered, someone being in the wilderness forty days, being being without food and being without his proper nourishment. The area that he was was in his physical desires. In Matthew 26 and 64, Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Never I say unto thee, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds. In other words, sin can be powerful, my brothers and sisters. But the grip of sin itself is what's so difficult to escape. That's why we need the power that Jesus had in order to deliver us from those sins. Jesus knew that if he was able to be delivered from sin, his delivery would come by way of the word of his heavenly father. So thus, 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 therefore, Jesus goes forward and he, he answers the adversary and he says, but yeah, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd remind somebody here today that your weapon is not the, the carnal things that are going on here. The, the weapon that you have is not those things that you see walking back and forth. The weapon that we have, my brothers and sisters, are those things that, that are not carnal. The, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 10, he says, for the weapons of our welfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Listen, verse 5 says, down imaginations and every high thing exalting itself against the knowledge of God and it brings it into captivity everything in the obedience of Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In, in order for us to get over these temptations, my brothers and sisters, we've got to have the power of the word of God. Yeah. Satan thought he would focus on Jesus' physical desires. Yeah. He thought he'd focus on Jesus' desire to have possessions and power. He thought he would focus on Jesus' position to have pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all think about that for just a few moments. That's probably some of our vices. Yeah, yeah physical desires. Yeah. If we see it, we believe we ought to have it. Yeah. If our neighbor has it, then we think we ought to have it. If, if somebody around the corner that we don't even like has it, we think we ought to have it. That's physical desires. But, but then possessions and power is what's really got this world turned upside down right now. now we, we, we've got a group of folks that, that found this location. They, they found this location in a drunken stupor. And, and when they found it, they said at that time that they had discovered America. But, but I stopped by to remember someone that's been reading the wrong history book. How is it that you discover something that when you get there somebody's already there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possessions and power has caused us to lose sight of who we are. Lose sight of the desire to seek God's face. Possessions and power is what causes us to malign some people and 
lift up other folks. Yeah. Possessions and power, my brothers and sisters, is what causes some of the biggest fights we've ever seen within God's house. Possessions and power. But then lastly, lastly, he says he wanted to tempt Jesus with pride. In other words, he wanted to make sure that Jesus understood that he could give him something that God couldn't give him. Yeah, I, I need to cut across the field here for a few moments because the reality of the matter is pride is what comes according to the word before a great fall. When, when you're not able to humbly allow God to lead you through this life, you end up with some problems. But let's look at the text for just a few moments. Jesus says here that man should not live by bread alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all wondering, well, wait a minute. What is Jesus talking about bread? I, I'm not hungry this evening. What is he talking about bread? I, I've got all that I need. Why is he talking about bread? But what I want you to understand is from the text, bread indicates something physical, something down here, something that can be obtained and give you partial satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of us find ourselves desiring the bread of this life. Many of us find ourselves seeking those physical things, seeking those things that, that, that material goods, things that might lord us up and make us look one way or the other. But, but Jesus says here that ain't no problem with you having bread, but, but you've got to make sure that you don't try to live on that bread alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to help somebody here today. There's not a problem with you having a nice house, my brothers and sisters. You, you just need to make sure you don't worship that nice house. It's not a problem with you having a, a new nice car, my brothers and sisters. You just got to make sure that you don't worship that new and nice car. That, that's not a problem with you having the nice clothes and the niceties of life. You just got to make sure that you don't worship those things of this life. But, but, but Jesus wants to make sure that you don't try to live by bread alone. Yeah, 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 because the truth of the matter is bread is what God would at some point in time initiate his new covenant with us through. But that bread alone is what not, would, would not only save us. It would only offer a remembrance of who God is and what God has done in our lives. Jesus says that if you want to gain power over temptations, you've got to be in compliance with God's word. Listen, I'm reminded of Psalms 1 and 1 where he says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But he delights himself in the law of the Lord. Good God Almighty. In other words, you've got to be happy with God's law. You've got to be satisfied with God's word. And he said, when you are satisfied, when you are happy with God's word, and you meditate on it day and night, he said, you'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. That listen, that tree that bring forth its fruit in its season is a leaf shall not wither, nor will it, nor whatsoever it does shall it prosper. You've got to have more than just bread, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he says, not only uh, must you be in compliance with this word, uh, but but Jesus, Jesus says you got to have, you got to have every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Let, let me see if I can help someone here this evening. I, I know my time is is just about out because y'all are are now in this microwave age. We've got about thirty five to thirty thirty to thirty five minutes to tell you what we're gonna tell you and get out of your way. And listen, I, I've been in a Bible study with my seniors the, the past couple of months, and we've been talking about the Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know those those things that are over in Exodus chapter 20, where, where, where Jesus, where God called Moses down and made him carry these large tablets that he wrote the law for the children of Israel upon. There are a couple of things I want to point out to you here from the Ten Commandments. The first thing is that our argument is that we don't need the Ten Commandments anymore. Yeah, yeah. We, we will argue that the Ten Commandments are old and out of date. The Ten Commandments really don't apply to us right now in this new age that we're in. But, but we, we discovered something in those Ten Commandments that, listen, the commandments were given to the children of Israel so that God 
could have a connection with them. Yeah, yeah. He, he wanted to say to them, listen, children of Israel, if you're going to belong to me, there's some things you got to leave in Egypt. Listen, one, one of my deacons said, listen, pastor, they came out of Egypt, but Egypt didn't come out of them. So in other words, for God to get Egypt out of them, he had to give them the Ten Commandments. And listen, the strange thing about it is that they could not live by those Ten Commandments. We got into all kinds of conversations. There are some folks that argue that the Ten Commandments are independent. They're broken down one by one. And I said, no, no. When God gave them this covenant, it was lock, stock, and barrel. He wasn't trying to let you live by one of those things and you not do something on the others. And then they said, well, wait a minute, Pastor. If the Ten Commandments are all lock, stock, and barrel and we could not do them, then didn't God, didn't Jesus show up and give us a way out of those Ten Commandments? I said, y'all haven't been reading your Bible, have you? Because the truth of the matter is, Jesus came to fulfill the law that the children of Israel could not fulfill. And the Bible says that even though those commandments came forward, Jesus says, I'm going to give you a new commandment that is in my bread, my broken body, and in my shed blood. In other words, Jesus paid the price for those Ten Commandments that we could not pay on our own. And I stopped by to remind you that when Jesus says here that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Listen, you don't get to cherry pick what you want out of this Bible. What you're going to live by, what you're not going to live by. You got to live by every word, every iota, every jot and every tittle. You got to live by the word of God. And listen, when you live by the word of God, that's some strange things are happening in your life. When you live by the word of God, you'll be able to get the power that you need to overcome those temptations. When you live by the word of God, you'll be blessed beyond measure. When you live by the word of God, you'll understand what peace really is. You see, a lot of us have peace, but we don't really have the peace that passes all understanding because we're not living by the word of God. There are a lot of folks that are satisfied, but they don't satisfaction because they're not living by the word of God. There are a lot of folks that are comforted but they're not comfortable because they don't live by the word of God. See when you live by the word of God, I mean every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God then you can turn around and do like Jesus did. You can tell Satan is it written? Is it not written? That listen you should not tempt the Lord God Almighty. Is it not written? That you should be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Is it not written that, listen, there's no depth, there's no place you can go to get away from God Almighty. You've got to learn how to live by the word of God. And when you live by God's word, you can get over the temptations. I don't care if they're small or large. You can get beyond those temptations. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. My brothers and sisters, if I had the time, I'd tell you to be cognizant of God's word. Allow God's word to be your counselor. But most importantly, stay in compliance with the word of God. And in my days of being um, in education, I did a lot of monitoring around this state. My job was to go out and make sure that dollars and programs were being implemented and spent appropriately. The strange thing is that in order for us to gauge whether or not things were going the way they were supposed to go, we had to follow the standards that, that, that were rules that were put in place and there were many rules that were that were local school district rules there were state level rules and then there were federal level rules and all of those rules you got to make sure you keep in compliance 
I don't care if you're new. <laughs> I don't care if you're seasoned. The rules still apply. <laughs> I don't care if you've been on the job five days or five years. The rules still apply. <laughs> I don't care if you're tall or if you're skinny. The rules still apply. Whether you happen to be white or black, the rules still apply. And, and my, my, my reason for bringing that forward is that I'm convinced this morning that somebody has told us that we don't all apply to this same word. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, if, if, if you're reading God's word and, and God says that the poor will be with you always, I don't care if you're, you're Greek, I don't care if you're Jew, you understand that the poor will be with you always. I don't care if you're Baptist, I don't care if you're, you're atheist, if you believe in God's word, you understand that the poor will be with you always. Listen, too often times, my brothers and sisters, we're taking our counsel from the wrong place. We're following the wrong understanding. We're doing things that size up and fit and follow into us. But Jesus said if you want to get beyond those temptations, if you want to handle the things of this world, he says that you should not live by bread alone. In other words, don't do it the way you think you ought to do it. You've got to do it according to what God has said for you to do. And in order to do it according to God's word, you've got to allow the Satans in your life to fall by the wayside. You've got to trust God in your understanding. You got to trust God in your counsel. You got to comply with what thus says the Lord. And listen, when you're doing those things, the temptations of the devil, even though they will be many, they will soon fall by the wayside. I just need to encourage somebody here today in the midst of this COVID-19 season. Don't get caught up in your temptations. Don't get caught up in the, in the who shot John. Don't get caught up in the luxury and the ease of what you're doing right now in life. Because at some point in time, my brothers and sisters, we're going to have to stand before the Lord God Almighty. And it's on that day of judgment that, listen, the same book of life will be opened up. The same standard will be put before us. The same understanding will be given there. And either he's going to ask for one reason. Either you're with me or you're against me. He's not going to walk down the middle of the road. Because anything that's lukewarm is going to make him sick at the stomach. I stop by to encourage somebody here today to make sure they're following the word of God. Make sure they're in compliance with God's word. Make sure they're living by every word. Not any kind of bread stuff, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Listen, if I could hurry to my end, Jesus had to live by every word. How do I know he lived by every word? Because the Bible says that before he went to Calvary's cross, he was in the garden of Gethsemane. taking good counsel from God's word. Get beyond your temptations by making sure you remain in compliance with the word of God. Listen, I know, I know that there's someone out there tonight 
that has heard this report. And then maybe you've been wrestling with whatever temptations in life. We all believe it's in order to invite you to Jesus Christ. To let you know that he's more than just a still voice speaking from behind you. He's more than just bread in a starving land. He's more than just a bridge over troubled waters. Our God is everything. And, and if you can make up in your mind to be in compliance with our God. Listen, he's already paid the price for you. All he wants you to do is make a decision. Make a decision to be on his side. And when you make that decision, I, I know, I know Tobias will, will gladly have you here at New Mount Zion. And, and if for some reason you don't want to come to New Mount Zion, I'm convinced that, that Tobias will help you find wherever it is you want to go. But make sure you get somewhere where you can work out that faith that's on the inside. Let, let me encourage you here today. I, I know, I know that they've got some phone numbers somewhere. I, I know there's, there's some contact information. If you're on Facebook, you can find New Mount Zion. I want to encourage you to reach out here tonight. Ask for somebody to come alongside you and pray with you and, and invoke the Spirit of God in your heart and your mind. Yes, it's unusual for us to do it this way. Yes, it feels a little uncomfortable, but 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 listen, God says that that I'll be a bridge over troubled waters. Listen, he told us to go to the hedges and highways. Go into the byways and tell folks about Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you tonight to be the one to step forward. Be the one to step forward and say, Lord, I need you in my life. Even right there in your living room, in your car, wherever you might be, invite God into your heart. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And the Bible says you shall be saved. Let me encourage you here tonight to come and give your life to Jesus Christ. It'll be a decision that you will never look back on. I'm not going to tell you that the road is going to automatically get easy. But, but he has promised a place on high for us. He's promised to come back for us. And, and, and I'm convinced that we are closer to a time of him coming than we are to a time of him thinking about coming. So we need to get it right here tonight. We need to make sure that we confess him as our Lord and our Savior. And give him our heart and our mind. I want to encourage you to make that decision tonight. I want to encourage you to pray a prayer of a sinner. Tell the Lord that you, you've fallen short. To tell God that you have, you have sinned and fallen short of his glory. But also tell him I believe in him. Tell him that you trust him. Tell him that you're ready to give your life over to him. And when you tell God those things, he'll hear your prayer. He'll hear your prayer and allow you to come in and sup with him. Be encouraged tonight. If you would join me in a word of prayer. Oh, blessed and eternal God. Again, Master, we just thank you for your holy word. We pray tonight, God, that some sin sick soul has heard this report here this evening, oh God. And that is hiring right now to stop stumbling over the things of this world. That is hiring, Master, to, to let you lead their life and let you order their steps. Father, we pray now that you would give them that hand of grace and mercy. Let them feel your presence right now, Father. And as they stretch out on faith for you, God, let them realize that you are still upon your mighty throne. Father, we pray tonight that you would bless homes that are hearing us tonight. Bless children that are listening in. Bless that one God that was passing by in the word of God. Grip them in their place. Touch right now, Father. Let them hurriedly find somewhere to connect with you, O oh God. Father, we pray tonight that you would strengthen all of us to keep doing what you have called us to do. Bless now this place called New Mount Zion, O oh God. Pour your spirit out upon this place, O oh Father. Touch now the shepherd of this house, O oh God, that he might gain strength and encouragement to keep declaring your good news, O oh Father. Master, we pray now that you would bless our society senseless killing that's going on, oh God. Help us find peace with one another. 
Help us find love in our heart with one another. And Lord God, I pray for your protecting power. That you'll touch all of our young black men, oh God, and put your arms of mercy around them. Remind them, oh God, that they belong to you. And you've got something special for each and every one of them. God, we bless you here tonight. We praise you, dear God. We bless and praise your holy name. And they all said together, amen. Amen, amen, and amen again. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. My God from Zion. What a word from Pastor Marcus Cheeks on tonight. Listen, that is the type of preaching that will change one life. You know, that, that's not the type of preaching you want to hear to make you feel good. But that's the type of preaching that I have you doing good. Somebody just missed that. That type of preacher doesn't cause you to feel good, but it causes you to live good. And the word of God tells us, calls us, and commission us to live a life that's pleasing to Christ. I'm going to be like Pastor Cheeks on tonight. Pastor Cheeks, you're not the only one with a vice. I have a vice. You have a vice. All of us have some ungodly habits. Somebody ought to say amen right there. But Pastor Cheeks has told us on tonight, the only way to overcome our temptations is by knowing and using the word of God. Thank you, Pastor Cheeks, for reminding us of that on tonight. What a word from God. Our ensemble is getting ready to give us a closing selection, and then we're going to close in prayer on tonight. Listen, please, ma'am, please, sir, one more night, tomorrow night, our final night, Pastor Michael Gibson from Mount Sinai will bless us on tomorrow night. Continue to pray for the city of Jackson. Continue to pray for the state of Mississippi, this country, this world that we live in. Pray for the Blunson family. We receive news that the former city councilman, uh, Brother Frank Blunson, has transitioned to be with the Lord. So pray for his family as well that God will strengthen them in this difficult time. Our ensemble is getting ready to stand. They're going to close up with this prayer. And this is our prayer on tonight. We pray that the peace of God, Lord have mercy to you. I don't know how you feel about it, but I need more of God's peace in my life. If you need his peace, you ought to type on the screen on tonight. I need the peace of God. May his peace be with you until we meet again.
will remind us on tonight that the only way to overcome and defeat our temptation is not by bread alone, but every word that permits out of the mouth of God. God, give us more of your word in our hearts and our minds that we can recall what thus said the Lord. When we get weak, remind us of your word. When we get weary, God, we pray that you remind us of your word. When we tend to fall down, God, we pray that your word comes to our heart and our mind so that we can use the word to overcome our trials and our temptations. And then, God, we know you can do it because Jesus Christ is the ultimate example. He was able to resist the devil there in the wilderness because of the power of your word. Thank you for the peace we now feel. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you for giving us another chance in the midst of our faults, our flaws, and our failure. Thank you, God, for giving us another chance. And we stand on your word tonight knowing that we stand on good ground. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. All hearts and minds said amen, amen, and amen. May his peace be with you until we meet again.